is in the garage, and I tell you this much, I must be a glutton for punishment. This thing is gonna need a lot of work. Okay guys, well, let's do a walk around and see what kind of damage a family of raccoons and other rodents can do living inside the interior of a Rolls Royce convertible. Okay, well, I'm gonna start with the outside. As you can see, somebody's got it blocked and primed. Years ago, the story goes, this car went into the shop for a paint job. It was a running, driving, fairly low mile car, 80,000 miles. And uh, the person either couldn't pay the bill or pass away, I don't know exactly which, but the shop ended up pushing this car into the storage building next door where it sat for many years and rodents and raccoons got inside and destroyed the interior. So the body is completely rot free. The frame is good, the chassis is good. Uh, and the engine apparently is low miles, although I've not tried to turn it over or start it yet. Um, so the body doesn't look all that bad. The interior, that's another story. And this is car number 6054. They only made 500 of these cars total. 505, I think, 109 were right-hand drive. So only 400-ish, just a little under 400 that were made in the left-hand drive, meaning that this is one of probably, you know, 98 cars or so made this year in 1968. So fairly rare. The downside to that is that it's gonna be really tough getting convertible specific parts for this thing. But let's check out the inside. Oh my word. This is probably one of the grossest interiors I've ever had in one of my cars. And that includes stuff I found in a field. This thing is totally trashed. I mean, they've hollowed out I don't know why they didn't do this part here where the padding is, but they've hollowed out all around here and down through there. Um, I'm guessing this had some serious uh, rodent damage as well as the raccoons getting in there. The raccoons, I don't think would have done all of that, but you can see the tear marks from their little claws on that leather. What a horrible shame. You know, this was a nice car. This was a decent car. Of course, any car you see that's in a field was probably at one time a nice car. Um, but this, I mean, this is this is just trashed. The dashboard is all clawed at and eaten away. You can see they even got into the door, uh, like the, the pillar up on the window. Uh, every little bit they could reach. Top of the steering wheel has damage. And this dashboard is supposed to kind of curve down ever so gently with nice upholstery. It's gone. They've gnawed and clawed and taken every little part that they could reach and just d utterly destroyed it. Um, hey, on the plus side, keys are in the ignition. <laughs> but seriously, guys, what, oh, what a mess. But when you have the framework for the seats, what you're looking at is essentially padding maybe some spring uh, work that has to get done in there, but it, it's fixable. If you have the frame of a seat, an upholster, a good upholster can fix that. And I happen to know, uh, at very least, an ambitious upholster who I think can take that on. Now, if we look at the back area here, again, they must have, maybe they had something sitting on the back seat where they didn't get to this, but look, the top part, this beautiful curved headrest that went all the way along, completely missing. It's completely gone. The wood remains, but the stuffing and the leather and everything is completely gone. And I can see there's some engine bits and some carpeting and some chrome trim. I sure hope that I have all the pieces I need for the body because that's not going to be easy to find that stuff when push comes to shove. The door panel's there. I saw that in the pictures that they showed me the car the door panel wasn't on I thought that was gonna be missing I'm actually pretty happy that that's there and this looks like the wood cap for it but look look at the veneer now the wood itself is still pretty solid surprisingly so I can get that re-veneered you know it's probably like a burled walnut sort of veneer that went on there I'll research make sure I put the right stuff on but oh can it be saved I don't know, it's pretty ratty, guys. It's pretty, pretty gross. Looking at the paint, I can see there's spots where things have landed on it, dented it. Rolls Royces are famous for having really thick paint, lots of coats of paint. And um, the problem with that can be when it starts to crack and crackle, 
it cracks through all the different layers. So even though this car is in primer, it's gonna still have to be taken down probably to bare metal on a lot of these places just to get it back to a point where it's not gonna crack through. There's my hood. I mean, thankfully everything is pretty straight on the car. The, the body is not, it's, it's not a total wreck. It's, it was never smashed or anything like that. So in that sense, that's okay. But let's see, speaker back there, convertible top. Please heed locks before operating hood power switch. Power roof, okay. Somewhere in there is gonna be the control for the convertible top. I'm gonna crawl around the other side and see if I can get inside the trunk. I'm putting gloves on because uh, I've got allergies. <laughs> it might seem silly to you guys watching at home. You go, oh, it's just dust, but this car smells like horse and I'm actually super allergic to horses and stuff. I must be looking for trouble buying a car that's like this. Okay, there's, it was silver at one point. I believe the original color was a bit of a darker gray than that. Trunk lining is not bad, but look, it has the, the grill still there. It's got the flying lady still attached to the grill. Like they just yoinked it right off the front of the car. Uh, I see the headlight bezels. I didn't even notice that the fan wasn't on. It's concerning that there's mechanical parts in here because uh, that might tell me that there's something more wrong with the engine than I know. I'm gonna have to uh, get a table and lay out all this stuff and see exactly. There's a couple bumper pieces over there, but I definitely don't see a full bumper. I see two corners for a bumper. Hmm, air, probably air cleaner covers tail lights that's a good thing and they labeled some of this stuff I'm gonna set up a little table and lay some of this stuff out oh I'm almost afraid to open this dashboard this glove box up to see oh well that's not as bad as I thought it would be what is this looks like a switch for a uh, like a radio knob or something oh I know what that is that's the antenna. That's for the power antenna right there. Okay, well, at least I have that. Really gonna have to take some time to go through and see what's missing and what I have here is more parts off the engine. Somebody was monkeying around with this thing. Okay, and there's a bag that they've left for me on the other side. Seriously, who does it? Who leaves a Rolls Royce convertible just lying around to get beat up like this? I mean, if they hadn't, I wouldn't be able to afford this car. But, I mean, you'd think you'd, you'd take a little bit better care of it. That said, you know, this car is a complete junker. And look, still lines up nice. Doors closed pretty good lines are all good i mean it was good build quality on this car originally it's not its fault that it got treated like this okay let's see this is the bag of assorted stuff that they've given me this i'll probably take inside the house and, and look at because it is freezing cold i don't know if you can tell but it's cold okay original jack still wrapped up uh, looks like some of the tools. That's good. Rusty looking bumper corners. Headlight bits and pieces. Boy, just a load of stuff. Oh, there's the hydraulic system back there for the convertible top. That doesn't look too bad. I'm guessing this carpet's gonna be pretty gross if it's back here. Well, it's got potential. It's surprising to me too that it still has all four hubcaps still 
on the car. You'd think sitting outside like that, somebody would have taken them. As for the engine, well, any parts like the air cleaners and that that are missing appear to be in the trunk. I'm hoping that uh, rodents didn't get inside, but I don't see any, any signs of that. They told me they tried to turn it over. At some point, I will try and uh, get this thing cranking over, but I'm not going to do that yet. Um, it doesn't have a fan blade on it right now. That was in the trunk. We're going to change out all the fluids and stuff. That's going to be a job for much later on. But generally, everything looks like it's here under the hood. And yeah, you know, not terrible. Uh, it's this part, the interior, which scares me the most. That's going to be where all the work has to happen right away. They've sent me some books to remind me of what this car is supposed to look like. <laughs> I imagine this is the stuff that was probably kept in like the office or den and never made it. It wasn't stored in the car because it's all in good shape, thankfully. We have a couple little spare parts, extra keys. I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. I'll have to find out. I mean, it looks like a plug cover, probably for the wiring harness. Let's stick that aside for now. That looks like the owner's manual. I'll open that up in a second. Look, somebody at some point splashed out and had customized license plates for this car. And look, there it is. That's it. Picture isn't dated. Where is it? 2008. September 20th, 2008. Well, I don't know how it could have gotten in that bad of condition since then. I think this this picture this picture was probably printed in 08, but that that's got to be much older than that. I can't imagine that much damage could have occurred in, you know, just a few years. Well, I guess a little over 10 years, but. There it is, it was dark gray, that light gray kind of interior. It's a nice car. How does that even happen? Got the registration. Oh, look, there's more. The Rolls carried the members of the Honors History Society in the homecoming parade of, at New Mexico State University, New Mexico, 1985. So that must be what that is. And these must be pictures of it when the last owner bought the car. Look, the seats are all there. The paint has a little bit of fading, but it's not that bad on the top of the fenders. Look, the interior really wasn't that bad. It was totally usable. There's the data plate. Okay, this must be spare parts that they took out of the trunk and displayed at some point. Oh, some of these are from when it fell into disrepair. Look, there's the dashboard there. This is so depressing seeing this car in, you know, in better condition. That must be it. Oh, that's it, probably around just recently because I can see the dashboards beaten up. Oh, look, there it is. They must be buying it or getting it delivered. Just an, a, it was just a pretty little car before it got completely toasted. Well, these pictures are gonna come in handy for me when I start trying to piece this thing back together. And yeah, that I was told that little uh, grill badge bar on the front was a factory option that they ordered for this one. And then they thought they'd paint it and they never thought that the, it would be, you know, left forever. There it is, out. that's probably what did it right there, parked outside with a tarp Animals get in there and and wrecked it. All because they wanted a paint job. It ended up not being worth it. I can't even imagine being the owner of this car and then knowing you had this beautiful car and then a few years later, rodents and raccoons and whatever else gets inside and totally destroys it. I, I think I would have been beside myself. Just, you know, that's probably why they sold it. Or the estate sold it, I guess. They said they thought that the person had passed on. There's all kinds of receipts and records here too. Work that was done. So New Mexico, it looks like it was at. Wow. Like, looks like this car was last registered on, on the road in 2002. 
and I've got receipts going back from the 80s and 90s. So it looks like it was having inspect heater blows strong. Coolant warning light comes on intermittently. Top won't go down. And it's listed as being green at that time. Green, green. So it's probably had a couple paint jobs since then. But you never know. Oh, hosed oil cooler, oil leaks, replace transmission seals. It's had a lot of work done over the years. I mean, you think thousands and thousands of dollars worth of repairs done to this car just to be shoved outside under a tarp. Well, we're going to see if we can save it. Random assortment of bolts and brackets, of which I am going to save, and I'll tell you why. These are probably a Whitworth thread. It's a special English kind of thread for most of these, and frankly, I if I have it and these can be cleaned up, I don't want to have to go back out and buy it again, so we're going to just go ahead and Put these all aside in case I can reuse some of this stuff before I completely chuck out this disgusting carpet that's in the trunk of this car. Okay, bucket of rusty screws picked up. Just a few little hoses and things to put away. And I found another one of these. And somebody told me that this was sort of like um, an old security device on the car. That if you took this out, nobody could start the car. If that's the case, um, either I had two of them. One was in the trunk and one was in with the keys. Uh, somebody didn't want this car to be started and probably stolen, which tells me that this car was probably running when it was parked. Um, I mean, there's probably more things that should tell me that, including the fact I have registration for it. But maybe that's a hopeful sign that somebody didn't want this car to be uh, hotwired and driven away. Maybe there's hope for this old girl. Who knows? Trunk is emptied out. I know. It's gross, but it's not that bad. Not as bad as I was thinking. I'm gonna try and get this old carpet out of here, but I'm wondering if the spare is still in here. Oh, I see a tire. Old carpet is torn out. Not really rusty at all. I mean, there's some uh, primer residue and stuff like that, but the trunk is solid as a rock. No rust in any of the uh, suspension points. I would say it's pretty darn near uh, rust free, really. So that's a big, big plus already. I put all my rusty nuts and bolts that were in the trunk into this little bucket. And I'm gonna fill it up with Metal Rescue. See if that does anything. I mean, it never hurts to try. Very least it'll clean some of them up. Well, I'm gonna dump that in there and check back tomorrow and see what kind of shape those are in. There it is. They're all covered and soaking. Let that sit for a while and let it work its magic. I have started to rip out the carpet in the trunk. I am now gonna work on getting the seats out because frankly, the seats in the dash are what make the whole interior look just awful in this thing. I'm gonna get those off to an upholstery shop. So I'm gonna be climbing underneath, uh, undoing some bolts, with any luck, this thing won't be too difficult to take out. And uh, off to the upholstery shop, it will go. I don't have a workshop manual for this car, but seats in old British cars typically go in one of two ways. Either there's bolts up through the bottom that hold the rail in, or else it's bolted um, from the floor down. I looked underneath, didn't see anything obvious, so I'm gonna have a peek here and see if I can figure out how these things are mounted. Let's start getting this out. <clears throat> There we go. One pin out, and do the other side. Okay, ratty old seats, literally ratty old seats are out. Door panels are out. Just have to load all this stuff up in my car. I'm gonna go meet the upholstery at her shop in a little while. Hoping that she can work miracles. Mind you, her name is Angel, her angel, so that might be a possibility for her. Um, well, it's looking better than it did. On my way to the upholstery shop right now, um, Angel is her name and saving my seats <laughs> is her game. I've been uh, using Angel for my upholstery work for probably well over 10 years now. 
Um, she does boats and cars and chairs and pretty much anything with fabric on it. This will be probably the worst thing I've ever taken her. So I'm a little bit concerned that, um, you know, uh, she's gonna be a little shocked when she sees this stuff. But if anybody can fix it, I'm sure she can. Uh, so that's one last thing for me to do. Um, it was a little bit of work getting the interior out, but really looking forward to seeing it go back in. This is the first step in bringing this car back to its former glory, uh, getting these seats done. And really that's, in my opinion, the worst part of the whole car. That said, we don't even know what kind of shape the mechanical is in yet, but um, that could come later. That will all come later. So this is the shop where the magic is gonna happen. As you can see, there's lots of seats lying around, lots of other projects. And there's my rat bucket, raccoon infested, horrible seats. But Angel, who's the miracle worker here, uh, you said they're, these aren't even the worst you've ever done, right? Uh, no, actually I have seats that the frames are completely gone and I have to actually start from scratch. I have a basic bottom frame that bolts down, but I have to come up with the whole upper section to hold foam and everything. And I was, so. I was in here once and you had a set of seats that had been on fire even. Yes. And yeah. that made me think if you could do that, that you could probably do these. So does, that doesn't scare you off at all? No. No? no. So that, those, that's exactly what I need to hear because it scares me a lot. <laughs> then we're gonna look at some fabric samples, I think, right? Some some leather and some vinyl and see what we can do to come up with a, Good combo. an economical solution and to make it um, as original as possible. Okie doke. So. so we've got some samples. This one you said, a little bit finer grain. Yeah. but the cost of the hide is twice as much as these as guys. this company here. And this company comes out of Ontario. Okay. And so they're great. This, this is a Calgary company, which is a fantastic company to work with. So are these Canadian cows then? Uh, no. Because I don't remember driving past a farm field and seeing a red cow walking around out there. <laughs> well, hides are dyed. One thing you want to watch when you're buying leather is you want to watch and you take a look at the, the side piece. And if it's dyed all the way through, you know you've got a good it's been tanned well some hides are actually tanned only on the top and then you'll see like the natural the natural skin color underneath but the top part is dyed so you can Those tell from these they're all the way through absolutely they're really good hides now these are nice and them. soft but so are these these ones yep. look a lot thicker some of them have are a, a thicker ounce ounces okay. are what you buy leather in and you have to remember when you look at leather leather cows don't come on a roll so when you're dealing with cow hides, <laughs> unless it's a dinner roll, well, yes, that's <laughs> yuck, a whole yuck. different that's a whole different situation. <clears throat> but um, when it comes to leather, because it doesn't come in a roll, technically it comes in this kind of a shape. Yeah, like you've it's got a stretched the legs, out. and you got the tail, and you got the head. Yeah. And so sometimes these areas are not tanned the same as this area, and so sometimes you can only use this area. And these areas can only be used as hidden parts. So then right. that way, because if it's not tan, if it's not tan all the same, then you're you waste some leather because of those parts, right? So it takes more leather sometimes. And you're saying your your estimate would be probably two to two and a half hides Absolutely. to do that interior. Uh, well, no, it, it's going to be a minimum two and a half hides. Okay. Minimum because the door panels have a lot of components. Right. Okay. And all those components take we'll take leather. Okay. So kind of looking at the different colors, it did come factory with this gray interior, but you have an mm -hmm. opportunity to do something different. Silver car with a silver interior is kind of a little bit boring, but maybe if you go a tiny bit darker, like more of a charcoal sort of gray, it might be interesting. And I was joking and saying, all I have to do is just, you know, there, that spot's upholstered now. Let's glue it down. Let's do, let's just use all your samples and we'll do like a patchwork quilt. It would be interesting. Hmm. Kind of like in the dark gray, really. But I have to say, even as it is, getting that rotted interior out of there makes a big difference in terms of how the car even feels. It's starting to look just like a car that's waiting for paint and interior, which is kind of what it is. Have not attempted to turn it over or start, I'm not even gonna try and do that yet. I'll get to that later on. Right now I'm focusing all my energy on getting this interior in good shape, getting the car prepped for paint, and then we'll tackle the mechanical later. And why do the mechanical later, you might ask? Because the car will be worth a whole lot more money if it's got a nice body and nice interior. Even if it's not running, it'll be worth more than if I got it running and left it looking like this. So it's kind of the reverse order that you normally do a restoration or a renovation on a, on a car. But in this case, I know that um, if I had to pull the plug and sell the car off right away, 
fresh interior and paint is going to make all the difference in the world to uh, getting my money back out of it at some point. But uh, so good progress so far today. Checking on the nut and bolt situation, look what a different color this is now. It's gotten really murky. But even though it's it's gone murky, um, this stuff is still reusable. Oh, that's looking way better. This is pretty cool stuff, actually. It, it takes the, the rust right off. I'm going to uh, drain this out back into the jug because it does, as much as it looks bad, it doesn't really go bad. You can keep using it over and over and over again. Uh, so I'm going to put that back in my jug, take these nuts and bolts out with a wire brush and uh, try and clean them up a bit. Okay, I'm going to dump these guys out, making sure my drain plug is closed up. All sorts of little screws and bits and pieces in here. Look at that sludge at the bottom, gross. And basically try and sort all this stuff out. I'm gonna give them a, a bit of a cleaning as I brush off the threads, and then I'm gonna set them on the, the board over there and try and figure out what's what. I'll probably get some Ziploc bags and organize them by size and type. Um, what I'm trying to find here, well, are all the missing screws for my car, but I need to find the, the screws for the hood so I can put that back on, and I don't know which ones they are yet. Well, I'm going to let these dry, but the rust remover did a pretty good job cleaning these up. Didn't even brush that one. Hopefully I'll be able to put some of these back to use. I'm guessing that some of these larger ones here might be for the hood. I'm going to have to find, I think there'd be eight of them though. That's what I'm not sure. It seems like I'm missing, missing a bunch of screws somewhere, but I, I know these are going to go somewhere on the car. It's important to have, but uh, get them cleaned up and at least we'll see what we have to work with here. Now that I got my parts all sorted out, I've got the bolts in one, the nuts in the other, any plastic trim pieces. So when I eventually need one of these parts, it'll be a little bit easier to find. Still put them back in the little pail here though, but it's a lot cleaner and uh, a lot easier to access than it was before. I'm gonna move along now into some of the bright work, some of the trim. The, uh, the chrome on the car is looking a little bit nasty right now, as you can see. Lots of uh, kind of corrosion. This one was in the trunk and I think it got water in there. That's the mirror. I'll have to get a new mirror put on there, but I'm hoping I can bring this chrome up. What I'm gonna be using is something very, very simple, and I'm sure everybody might have in their kitchen. I'm using an SOS pad. You might say, oh, that's too abrasive. No, it's fine. It's chrome is very hard. Um, you wouldn't wanna use anything any rougher than this. In fact, a lot of times if it's just bright work on a car, I'll use thousand grit steel wool without any soap in it. But the stuff with the soap in it is gonna help us to get it clean. So let's get a little water running, get this soaped up and see if we can bring this bright work back and make it nice and clean. Okay, I'm gonna tackle this one. This one is really kind of nasty, but a lot of times you see something like that and it is really just surface. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the wet steel wool and just vigorously move that around on there. And we'll get an idea of what kind of shape the plating and everything is underneath. Whether it's rusted, it doesn't feel pitted. I can tell you that right now. It feels nice and smooth, which is a good sign that that's just really surface discoloration we get out in this area a little tricky to get the edges but they're good Kind of see that the soap is a little bit discolored because it's been taking off some of that gross crud that was on there. Let me get the edges here. And you can go take this into a mirror shop is what I'll do. And uh, they can, for about 20 bucks, they'll put a new mirror in it. And I can assure you that is a lot cheaper than buying a replacement mirror from Rolls Royce. I don't give up on things that easy, especially when they can be fixed. 
There we go. Look at that. Even my hands are getting cleaner. See, you might have seen that in the trunk of your car and thought it was garbage, but look, it's just fine. That I'm gonna put that right back on the car. A little chrome polish afterwards, and this thing's gonna be minty. All it needs is a new mirror, which I'll take that in after the weekend here, but it's like jewelry. Looks great. I pulled all the wood trim out of the car, and as you can see, the varnish is pretty well all off already. I'm gonna give it a bit of a sand, see if I can do a little bit of magic on these and make it look a lot better and then uh, hopefully clear them and get them back on the car without too much effort. There's gonna be some gluing and some repairs involved, but it'll certainly be a lot better than what it is right now. I've got the surfaces sanded down. See, it's not terrible. Like the, the clear coat came off really good, but there's areas like this, you kind of see the little cracks and imperfections in the wood, a little chip right there. I'm taking a walnut uh, this is a wood filler. It has a little bit of glue kind of in it too, so it'll repair and fix any holes, and then it's stainable. So I'm taking a little bit of that on my finger and mixing it with water to kind of create like a mud. And then what you do is you kind of get it all in there, like this paste, and that'll fill the cracks. After I'm done this, I'm gonna give it a light sanding, and all those little cracks should be nice and full. Now that I have the, the filler basically kind of, I want to say mudded in to fill the cracks and I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then give it really a light sanding to, I don't want to take the veneer down. So it's just gonna be very light scuff just to get rid of any high spots there. And it'll be just about ready for me to put uh, the varnish on. Now that that is dry, I'm gonna take my sandpaper, which is a 220 grit and gently just work the filler out of the wood all the way around until it's nice and smooth. After that's all done, I'm gonna do the whole thing. Um, I gotta wash it off, let that dry, and then I can apply the clear coat. So one way to see what your finished product is gonna look like just with clear coat on is to get it wet. So that's kind of what this wood is gonna look like once I start putting a clear finish on it. You can see the burl wood really starts to pop. And the filler, well, it blends pretty good. I did use a walnut colored filler, so it is filling all right. But I think that'll look uh, half decent once I get the clear on there. I've got them prepped and ready to put the first coat of clear on. I'm using Verithane Professional Gloss. And this is not sponsored by Verithane, but just think, if you were sponsoring me, Verithane, look at all the advertising you'd be getting. Um, I'm going to start by brushing it on evenly, and I don't want there to be any brush strokes. So I'm gonna try and make sure the whole surface is coated. And while it's still wet, we're gonna make sure these brush strokes go end to end so it makes it nice and even. So you can definitely see the difference just by putting a little clear on. I'm gonna be doing several coats. This is the first one. After this is done, we'll be doing another after sanding this, and then another and another and another until it's like glass is what we're gonna do. But I wanna make sure I get this first coat on there nice. And make sure it's nice and even so there's no dotted brush strokes on there. I'll let that dry. After that's dry, uh, I'll sand it down with a uh, probably a, the 220 just to get any bumps out and then we'll do it again until it's nice and glossy. <laughs> One thing I didn't really cover off is answering a couple questions of how the car went from looking like this, which is a nice driver quality car with a half decent interior to that. That happened all within a period of, well, let's see. The car was purchased in 2003. So, you know, over a period of, dec of a decade or more, the car got destroyed mainly because the previous owner passed away and they shoved it outside. 
I was reading through this note and it says, Dear George, great news for you. The keys and the photos of the car have surfaced and I'm sending them along to you. Thank heavens I stashed the extra keys 30 years ago just for such an emergency. These were the original owners. You must be having fun time telling your friends that you bought a Rolls Royce at a garage sale. What a classic story. We always called the car the Empress. It's good to know it has a name. It seemed, it just seemed to fit. I hope that all is well with you and your family. And so this is from a lady named Alexandra. And I looked up um, Alexandra online. I was actually gonna reach out to her and talk to her about her former car. Sadly, she passed away. Um, she was someone who was very much into history and had a stunning Adobe style home that she had um, lovingly restored over a period of time, was featured in magazines with it too. But this was her mom's car. Her mom bought it brand new. They lived in the Del Monte forest area in, um, in Pebble Beach. Nice community <laughs> from what I hear. And um, it went from being a really beautiful car and passed down to a daughter and then sold to this fellow and then basically destroyed. So when you have a car like this, you wanna try and preserve not just the vehicle itself, but the family heritage, the history that went along with it. And I think a car that was well-maintained for all those years deserves a better life than what it's getting right now. And thankfully it was maintained properly over a period of many years. I've got receipts going back to the 1960s. I think with a little TLC, I can get that car looking like this again, or even a little bit better in no time. Last week I started reassembling some of the dash panels and uh, took the upholstery off of this area here to get it redone. There's some pieces underneath here you can see that are gray. I've got a better piece for there. Um, I want it to all be black. Um, I know this car had the two-tone sort of dash, but I think it'll look a lot nicer. See how that was black? The dash is black if it just continues through the black. And that means that this little center console here, trying to get my light out of the way, um, needs to be cleaned up and dyed as well. Um, I'm going to start off by getting my handy dandy spray nine, which I've learned that some guys, some of you guys don't have that in your country, but we have it here in Canada. It actually works really good. I'm going to get that on there and um, start getting that all cleaned. Okay, so I'm out in the garage, I'm working on the car, and I noticed that the glove box door is in fact different. So I had to come inside and redo the old glove box door off the car, and I'll show you what the differences are. This is the one I just had refinished and put on the car. The problem is, it has a little button on the top here, and the one that is meant to go on the car does not. Um, so what I did is I took the rat-eaten <laughs> and rodent and raccoon and whatever else was in there eating it, I took the uh, padding off of the other one, and last night I used my varathane and I sanded it down, and it actually turned out really, really nice. I'm, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, so I got the wood off of the other one. So you can see that one has a handle, but it's not supposed to on my car. It's supposed to be hidden. Uh, and the brackets are a little different too. Um, so I've got to dismantle this padding, whoa, dismantle that and put it on uh, the other piece and put it back on the car. At least I, I had the original dash. I had the original panel so I could do that, but um, was almost a bummer, but decided to do it right. Yeah, I've got the correct bracket put on this side. That one was all right. I decided to uh, put a little glue and clamp down some of the leather a little bit better. Now to stick the wood on. And the thing with a hand-built car like this is that every one is different. So I've noticed that when I put the uh, wood on, like this, the screw holes don't line up with where the old one was. But that's okay. It's wood. I can make new ones. And um, that will be in good condition. So really, I'm just salvaging the dash pad after all is said and done off of the uh, parts car. But still, at least I'll have a nice dash put back in. And that uh, old one turned out pretty nice. There, that's a much better fit. And now it's smooth all across the top as it should be. And it just locks into place with a little magnet that holds it in. Working perfect. Well, top dash is good. This section was all eaten out before. That's all done. Now I'm gonna start getting the lower panels in place. Okay, well that's one more piece on and in place. Dash is slowly starting to come together. The steering wheel is really throwing me off. It's too cold in here to paint right now. This is gonna take a bit of sanding to get that finish down in that area. But 
you know, glad that pieces like this that were really gross are coming back together. I'm gonna reassemble the uh, lower fuse panels, do a little work down there, but feeling a little tidier in here already. I can't put too much of the dashboard together just yet because I'm waiting on carpeting and the lower console pieces can't go on until the carpet's in. But what I need to do to prepare for the carpet, which I don't have yet, is to get the entire interior all cleaned up, vacuumed out and ready to install. Right now it's still a bit of a mess. There's some parts and pieces and garbage in there. So I'm gonna clean out the entire interior here to get it ready and prepped for carpeting. Steering wheel was driving me crazy. So I started with a little bit of uh, gritty sandpaper going after it. And a lot of that, um, this white sort of corrosion that's on there is just coming straight off. So with a little bit of work here, I can probably get this roughed up and I'm gonna go through a few different grits of sandpaper. This one's a little rougher than you'd normally use, but I'm gonna go lighter and lighter and lighter until I get all this bumpy, it's tooth marks and claw marks is what it is in the steering wheel. I laugh, but it's gross and that's what it actually is. I'm gonna try and get all this bumpy, gritty grossness off of here and uh, see if I can salvage the steering wheel. Steering wheel update. I have um, used some thousand grit steel wool and scuffed it down, but I think this plastic layer that's on here is still in okay shape, actually, even though I sanded the top layer off. I don't even think I have to paint. I think all I have to do is polish it. I was just looking around my garage to see what I had, and uh, this was a little bit frozen, but I thought it out. <laughs> it's my Meguiar Scratch X. Um, I'm gonna give this a try and see. It says it's good for removing swirls and light scratches. I'll give it a try and see what it does on the plastic here. I don't see plastic as being one of its recommended uses, but here goes nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna kinda put that on just like that. And I'm gonna just use my finger here to kind of rub that in. Kind of get that all over the surface and we'll see using this little cloth if it comes up any shinier. Well, it's still a little bit dull. I might have to do this a couple times. But it's come, it is coming out though. Getting a bit of a shine. Probably keep at it for a little bit and that'll be just fine. That's after a little bit of polish. It's kind of a matte finish compared to the gloss that it probably was. But if I keep working on that, that's gonna be um, really good and don't even have to paint or do anything with it. Just buff it right back up and the steering wheel's already looking much better. Okay, I've not secured it in place, but I did hook the terminals up. And I can already see my door was open. And look, there's a light. So there's one thing that works. Okay, I'm gonna close that door. Light goes off. Uh, the One of the lights on the, the lights for the convertible top are on. Don't exactly know how to shut that off just yet. Uh, okay, let's see what else. Glove box light is working. Gotta be nice to, okay, there we go. Have to close the door to make that stop. Uh, okay, this is the big, well, there's no headlights hooked up right now. Oh, you guys hear that? What on earth is that? Oh, it's my windshield wipers. That's enough to and make sure it's in park. Let's see. Well, the windshield wipers, windshield wipers are working. And where's the switch for that? Right there. Radio aerial. Surprisingly, I can hear that working. Oh yeah, you guys see it? Poking up through the little wire that's sitting there. I'm gonna put it back down. Power antenna's working. Um, let's see. 
radio. Let's see if the radio works. I can hear it's trying to work. I don't have the knobs on. It's gonna make testing out the radio a little difficult without knobs on it. I'm frantically searching for the knob that went on there. Don't know if I've got it. Oh, let's try this by hand. I've got, I've got light. I can hear it staticky. I think a little bit of tuning and adjusting. I can hear the speaker working. Uh, okay, what else do I need to check? It's encouraging to see these dashboard lights working. Now, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a crank just to, I mean, the engine right now could be seized. I don't know. Well, let's try the horn first. Oh, horn works. Uh, oh, let's check the windows. Okay. That one's trying to work, but it's not. Oh, there's this. There's a switch for the interior lights. Okay, that works. We've got one rear window that doesn't work so far. Driver's side window. read some of the instructions for some of this stuff. Um, let's see if the seat does anything. Some of these things are working, which I'm surprised. Okay. Not seeing anything happening there. Uh, let's see, where's the, do I even risk turning on the blower fan? That could be scary. It's probably one of these switches here. I don't have the, Okay, panel light, turn that off. The big thing is, is the engine seized? I'm gonna give it a little crank, see if anything happens. Nothing, but that could be because I have the uh, little plug taken out. I'm gonna run inside the house and get that and see if that changes anything. This is the piece I was looking for. This is apparently the security lockout. It was in the showcase with my toys. I'm going to take this down and see if that does anything. On right there. And I guess the idea was if you take that out, it disables the car. Let's we'll see if that does anything. Okay, here is the test to see if this car has a stuck engine or not. We're going to turn it on and give it a little crank. Okay, well, that's encouraging. It's obviously not gonna start because there's no gas or uh, anything in there, but that engine is not stuck. That is an excellent sign. And look, my dash lights are working. Mind you, they're probably telling me that there's all sorts of things wrong with the car, but they're working and that's good, right? Um, I have a few windows that work. Maybe there's a way for me to make this all, you know, come to life again. I don't know how to work the, oh. Okay, well, one power seat's trying to work. You guys see that? See if I can make it work again. It's not gonna go anywhere right now, it's all disconnected, but power seats might be functional. The lights for the, uh, at least some of the lights are working for the convertible top roof. Um, okay, well, it's not a completely dead car, and this, and it's not making any horrible clankety-clank sounds. That's all really promising. There she goes, loaded up and on her way to the paint shop where hopefully they can do 
something with it. It looks a little bit better out in the daylight. That body doesn't look too bad, but there are still lots of spots on it where, you know, I can see there's a dent on the lower pan there. It's gonna need a good going over, but they said they're up to the task. I guess we'll find out. With the car out of the garage, I can finally start to do a little bit of cleaning in here. It's been very cold, and anytime I come out here, I've kind of just ended up with these little piles of parts and pieces that have come in. My toolbox is a mess. I'm gonna spend some time today kind of going through and cleaning up my garage and trying to make room for the car when it comes back. There's also a lot of parts and pieces that I'm not gonna be able to use, like the crusty old broken dashboard and other bits that um, are so far gone, they're not worth saving. I can do a good cleanup in here, uh, fold the table down and really start to get things prepped and ready for the car to return. And yes, I'm building these indoors in our living room, but that's one bumper completely done and just about ready to install in the car. I've got one more to go, the rear bumper, and that'll be at least two less things I have to worry about for getting the car together. But that sure looks nice, all that shiny chrome. This box has all the parts I took out of the trunk. I cleaned off some, this one has not. You can see that's labeled as the right rear taillight. It's gonna need some cleaning, but to do that, I've gotta disassemble it. There's screws down inside there. I'm gonna take that all apart, get some of the uh, loose debris out from the inside and get this thing cleaned up, prepped, and ready to mount back on the car. There they are, waxed up, polished, ready to go. Next stop will be on the car. I will have to order some new uh, rubber gaskets for the uh, bases, the plinth gaskets. So those ones are a little worn out, but these taillights cleaned up really nicely. This morning, I'm headed over to the paint shop to uh, talk to the guys there and see exactly what they think this car is gonna take to get it back in uh, shiny, nice looking condition. Feel a little bit guilty, I'm taking the ambulance. The ambulance needs a bit of work. It kind of feels like taking all of your kids to the uh, to the clothing store and just buying them uh, one of them, a pair of new pants. <laughs> I want you kids to know that I love you all the same. I do. But uh, your older brother here, he's the one who's getting new pants today, all right? Well, I'm sure the ambulance is gonna forgive me. At some point, I'll have to get some body work done on this car, maybe get a new paint job. This is not gonna be cheap when I do this thing. This is a tank, this car. Um, but we'll get an idea, at least at the body shop, what these guys have to say. Um, somebody had started the body work on this car before, but the problem is it sat for so long that some of the primer has cracked and chipped and uh, it's got a couple little dents in it now. Um, so it's not in great condition, even though it doesn't have any rust, it's not in fantastic shape. We'll see. So here it is, back in a paint shop after more than a decade of being out. Um, definitely in the light, you can start to see there's some little, you know, dents there, a little spot there. It's the problem with doing body work on a car and then shoving it outside, things happen again. What the body shop does, and I actually do this if I'm doing my own body work, is you mark off all the areas that need attention where there's been some lacquer crackle in the paint, where there's little dents. Um, it looks like concerned Charlie Brown eyebrows, but <laughs> that's what you do. You mark off all the spots that need work so that the um, when the body man comes along, it's really easy to identify. Plus that helps us figure out exactly what the car is gonna need. And there's little bits like underneath here. You'll never see that, but there's a bit of a dent on the bottom. Overall though, the car is very solid and that's what drew me to it. Um, hopefully next time I see this car, we'll come and do a little, uh, a few progress reports on it, but uh, it, I'm excited to see this car shiny and silver. It's been a long time since this thing has looked good and it's overdue for a paint job. Okay, well that's it. And you're probably asking yourself, why are you doing the body work now? Well, it takes about a month to get paint and body work done. I'm also waiting right now for the upholstery and carpet kits to come in. Um, so I would be stalled on the project right now if I didn't move ahead with something. Um, so I've decided to get the body work done uh, so that when it comes back from the body shop, I'll be able to put everything all together. Anyway, normally you wouldn't do the body work before you do um, a whole bunch of the mechanical, but the plus side of doing it this way is that the car is actually worth uh, more money once it's painted and reassembled, even non-running, than it would be is if it looked like a sack of hammers <laughs> and drove nicely. While the Rolls Royce has been out of the paint shop, I've been acquiring things like brand new carpet, uh, there's a convertible top, uh, all the extra bits and pieces that I need to finish the rolls. Here is the car at the shop. You can see they've got the little 
indentations repaired. There was a couple dents there on the front. That's all fixed. Uh, they've taken some of the cracking lacquer back down to the metal just to get the cracks out of the paint. Thankfully, it wasn't body filler that caused it to crack. It was just a matter of thick paint and Rolls-Royce prides themselves on putting lots of coats of paint, which is kind of a bad thing when it starts to crack, but um, it looks like they've been going over it and kind of smoothing everything down. It's really a nice solid car, so this should clean up pretty well. Let's check the back end. So they're still working their way around the car, getting it blocked out and sanded and primed. So this is looking good. So they say within the next few days here, they're gonna be getting ready for primer. And then after primer comes paint. So it's moving along pretty nicely. So since last time I was here, the gas cap cover has been sanded down and prepped. The grill that was off of the parts car has been all stripped down and uh, ready to be painted. They've done a fair bit of body work, feathering and filling in where there was some cracks in the lacquer. And it's getting very close to paint. But in the meantime, what I have to do is get the other bits for the car in. I've had some carpet show up at home. I can't put any of that until the car is back though. I'm gonna leave these guys to it to continue. Okay, well it's got its first stages of primer on. Looks like they're doing a bit of spot sanding. Getting it ready. It's gonna be pretty close to paint which is exciting. We've got the lower dents repaired along the bottom. So at this stage, the purpose of the primer is really just to find imperfections. They laid a first coat down and you can kind of spot and see little things that are gonna need attention. Small little cracks, imperfections of paint, if there's a little dent. So they'll go over it a couple more times before it's ready for paint, but they're saying paint will happen next week. And that's good news for me that it'll be on its way home, but I also have a car in my garage that's taking up the room where this is supposed to go, and that's gonna create some problems. But we'll worry about that when the time comes. For now, I'm gonna let these guys get back to work. See that the dents that we had underneath the bumper there are gone, they've been repaired. Uh, the car has been uh, completely sanded. I can see they've gone over the whole thing. We've got our extra little bits and pieces here. I'm not gonna touch it, but. Those are the jacking plate covers. Those are all primed and painted and ready. It looks like essentially this car just has a little bit of prep work left to go, maybe blow off some dust. And then it's off to paint. Partly the delay in getting the car done is that we're waiting for the engine in this E-Type to get installed and rebuilt. I think they're just about through it because this is their heavy duty hoist and they need, need one fairly heavy for my car. But I do notice something different already. My upholster has been here and she's just about got the top on. Look at that, I just about have a roof back on my car. Rear window is in, just about got it stretched out, looking pretty decent. She's not here right now, so I can't ask her about it, but this will be so nice to actually seal it up. It hasn't had a, a roof on it probably in 15 years or so. We're gonna see if it works. Look at that. <laughs> it's aggressive. It's a, yeah, it's an aggressive, or you don't wanna put your hand up there when it's going up or down. Was it difficult to get, the, uh, to get it working? Uh, yeah, there was a wiring issue because of the age of the vehicle, all the corrosion inside the wires, so we replaced part of the loom. We bled the system, replaced the hydraulic fluid, and like, it's alive. Yeah, it is alive. We almost have a car. How's the uh, E-Type going along? Because I think that, that car has to get finished before yeah, mine can go on. We are putting together the transmission. It will be checked like during next week. If the transmission goes well, we'll be able to put this beast on the hoist. Perfect. Well, it'll be good timing. It's too heavy to put it on any other vehicle, the hoist except for the hoist one. So we hope, we are scared to be under it. It's too heavy. Oh to no. For. I, uh, I agree. It's a, it's a heavy car. Oh, I can see the few things left to do. There's piping that goes right along this channel here. 
these portions on the side will get stapled in place. And I imagine she's got to do a little bit of uh, creative pulling to kind of get that angle just right there to cover the other staples. And it, it's a it, curious system that they have. They use wood. You know, a lot of cars there, the, you know, there's a metal piece that bolt on English. Well, it's wood, it's, it's old school. So then that will go on something like that. And then I think it's just a matter of the front bows. I took some of the wood that was underneath here and refinished it. I'll put that back on later on. And she took the, uh, the back seat out to go and do some adjustments on that. So my back seat's out. But all in all, we are at least seeing some progress on the car. People like it when they come through? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it is a good looking car. It has a real life. Like, you, can, you can compare it to anything. It's a solid body, no fenders, no wheels, no stitches, no nothing. And it has gorgeous lines comparing like to the regular four door silver shadow, silver spool, whatever. It has way better lines. And yeah. That's, like, that's the reason why they keep the value. Yeah, it's Molinar Park Ward and they did this beautiful little sort of indentation here that brings out the fender a little bit and the swoop that comes down. It is a beautiful car. It will be so much fun to drive this. And again, I'm hoping this summer to have the kids come for a ride outside, but you know, you gotta be patient and wait for things to happen. These things don't happen overnight. And plus the shop really couldn't do too much right now anyway, because we're waiting for the top to get finished up. So timing should end up being perfect. Top will get finished up this week. And then, uh, next week we get it on the hoist and find out exactly what it needs. First though, um, I got the final piece of the interior back from the upholster. This is the seat back with the armrest. This is the one that uh, was completely uh, eaten away on the top. This part did not exist before. So Angela's built that back up and I've got my sun visors back that were all gnawed and chewed away. I'm gonna get those loaded up into the old Buick and uh, hopefully we'll have some nice surprises at the shop and, and cross my fingers that the car is very close to being done. Um, delivery arrived. Okay, so these are the parts we were waiting for, the magical parts that came from England. Yes. Uh, like you have the shock, the emergency brake cylinder. Yep. The hydraulic system accumulators, a lot of all the rubber hoses we could get for this vehicle. Luckily with Rolls Royce, most of the service parts we can get replacement, so. Well, it's not a big box, but it's an important box full of stuff. Yeah, it's a heavy box. Yeah, I mean, and there's a, a lot of bits and pieces, so. Not the least, it's an expensive box. Oh, I, I can imagine. The calipers, you sent me some pictures. Yeah, we were there on the bench in a couple minutes. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get, the... get you there. Get so, a couple minutes. How have you been? Yeah, we've been busy. Yeah? Yeah, like. It's been very hot the last couple of weeks, but and we trying to manage. No air conditioning in the shop. Yeah, I don't believe there is an air conditioned shop. <laughs> Small shop in Canada, but for two weeks in the year that we have summer. Yeah, we get air conditioning in winter for free. Exactly. Well, well there it is. So, yeah, we managed to rebuild, to resurrect all the six brake calipers on the vehicle. Like finally we have three spinning wheels. We started to, to replace the brake hoses, as you can see from here. Oh, yeah. We started to replace the brake hoses. Okay. Also the same. The second side, the caliper. By propose, I left one caliper outside to show you how it... Let me grab my gloves. Okay, oh, yeah. You know, the nice thing is, at least it's good and solid underneath here. Yeah, we were... Seriously surprised how clean and the rust. Like, look at the, the rockers are all the, the perfect. Body, the body itself of the vehicle is in gorgeous condition comparing to what we found on the all the other parts. But once again, it's all maintenance parts and all the rubber stuff. So okay, it's going right. to get old. Rear brake calipers that actually stop this seven, eight thousand pound beast. We managed to clean and rebuild the parking brakes next this. And here is your calipers. So ideally, 
that's the way that's 20 what? years old junk looks and it was sitting especially system system wasn't oh, sealed yeah. look at everything so we have rust no we we had to grind them from inside to be able to pull them out right because they were seized there so badly good thing about rolls royce that we can get all the small parts all the rubber parts we also have brand new brake pistons with everything okay i was gonna say are we reusing no, those no, no, those, no, no, those no. are done the problem is that you cannot get the calipers itself even not an exchange base so we had to do a lot of work to be able to resurrect them that's how it that how it looks after cleaning blasting we cannot paint them because originally from factory they came metal finish right and that's your front caliper one of front calipers one, but basically it, ready to go that's ready to go we are we decided to go to get a new brake pods they must arrive here shortly because these are even though they have a lot of meat on them but they are doomed and <laughs> right yeah so they we were don't wanna, we don't want to reuse them it looks like they were probably new but the car sat so long that they've gone they, bad. they are new i cannot say that there is any wear on them but you can see they're spreading and yeah like that's brittle. not that's not the thing we want to relay rely when we planning to stop no no this kind of titanic <laughs> i don't i don't blame you yeah so uh, these are your brake hoses it's my old hoses yeah i left one the most horrible one for okay example so yeah we are slowly slowly but making progress we are so, making good progress so once the brakes are done i mean there's probably a couple minor things like hooking up the the license plate light and things like that but there's not too much left to do on it i think after uh, the brakes first of all we were not able to we weren't able to road test it properly right because if you can stop the vehicle you can drive it right so we checked on the suspension components found a couple uh, very small rejects comparing to 20 years old sitting vehicle once we are done with the older suspension one front shock here and there we'll be able to check how the transmission works and we'll be able to right. hopefully finish the out of province inspection and make this beautiful thing to drive on the roads finally well i am excited to get it back hmm yeah. We will have a pancake situation if this car gets lowered onto this XJS. I don't think there'd be much left of the XJS. It no, already looks like it's squished. The hoist is on the box. <laughs> this is like this is the hoist that able to handle that kind of weight. Yeah, that's why it's on the box. So all the hydraulic body for the brakes and suspension. That's uh, quite the setup for the brakes. It's way different than what you see on a North American car. Uh, it's over engineered in the levels that like it was built. I don't know. It wasn't built to last, but... Ex-World War II engineers who didn't have aircraft to design anymore thought they'd I spend their they, time doing they this. they were pre-World War II. <laughs> like even, you can see the funny thing about Rolls-Royce if you come here. Yeah. It has a regular transmission yeah. with a transmission level on it to, to change the gears. And that's a GM transmission. Correct. Yeah. But to make it a British way, to make it a comfortable way, they made a special electronic unit that actually transfers the movement of the gear level leveler on the steering wheel to mechanical action to change the gear. Oh. So they didn't make it simple at all. <laughs> you send the signal from steering wheel here, it changes mechanically and goes there. That's why we had no parking brake on this one. Right, okay. And we're gonna, once again, once it's running, we're gonna check the functionality of this stuff. Yeah, a lot of strange things. Like you can see all the, like especially here, where, where was that? Especially here, you can see all the rotten brake lines. Yeah. Part of them look gorgeously clean. Part, part of them look deadly rotten with right, not only surface rust. So- The way it was stored, I guess. Uh, yeah, the raccoons didn't make a good job on it. No. <laughs> if, if they were working on it during 20 years, it will be a new vehicle, but we're gonna replace all the brake lines that need replacing, gonna inspect all of them, flush the system because you saw the gunk that goes inside. Well, it's good. I mean, we want it safe. I mean, putting my kids in the back of this, Absolutely. so we want it to be in good Even condition. Even if you wouldn't put your kids in the back, in any meaning, if you even sign a waiver that you're going to drive this car, whatever happens, we want to keep other people safe. Because if you hit with this thing something on the intersection, 
it will send them to the outer space approximately. <laughs> approximately outer space. You're not sure. They just they disappear into the atmosphere, you assume outer space. Yeah, this thing waits. Yeah, it's a it's a heavy vehicle. I mean Well it's a choice between uh an ETS bus and the car. <laughs> so they're pretty much equal. <laughs> yeah. Wait twice, yes. <laughs> well, I think it's uh, it's nice to get an update on it um, and see the progression. We can see some of the new hoses and things that have been put on. It's a new wood fuel pump. That's just a temporary line so we could get some brakes just to move it around. Right, the shop. okay. Um, because once it was done on the floor because we <clears> had no, no vehicle on the hoist, we couldn't move it at all. It was done on the floor. And so the plan now is get the other caliper finished up. That one is ready to take like about half an hour, hour to, to put it back. And it, get the brakes, brake pads replaced. The, this vehicle has a hydraulic brake system yeah. and uh, hydraulic high pressure pumps. So we're going to replace the high pressure pumps. The accumulators. The accumulators, flush the system completely because it has a lot of gunk inside. Yeah and start to see where from it starts to leak. We're gonna inspect all the brake lines, all the cold metal brake lines. We start to inspect them, replacing them. In the end of the day, we try to maneuver between doing everything and keeping the cost still within logical frames somehow. Well, appreciate that. So there she is up on the hoist. Um, Stuart, you were saying that you were waiting for a special part from Bentley to come in to take the suspension apart, is uh, that right? That's, uh, that's this, that's in. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this, uh, this tool is... That tool, okay. We're getting the uh, shock absorber out. And so does it compress the spring or something, or...? Yeah, it uh, enables you to get it out of the vehicle, and then uh, you put it into uh, the... Um, vice and then you use another spring compressor to compress the spring and then you can get the yeah. shocks out and all of that because i had a shock absorber that was leaking uh, yes you can see the oil still coming out of it yeah i can see that and uh, it's pouring down so. so getting the shock wasn't the problem it was getting it out that was uh, the problem yes and uh, now again that's a challenge everywhere we go now we've got a new steering coupling but the one that was supplied from rolls is um is a modified version so now we've got to sort of readapt this to get it to fit. Okay. Um, and the transmission is uh, the filter. That leak's all been done. Um, so. So yeah. what's what's left on it? Would there's, you say? There's, there's not too much. We went for some brake pads when Liv took them out. They were even though they the, the the thickness was good. They were all old and starting to crumble. So it wasn't worth it. We put new brake pads in just because of the safety aspect. Yeah, I saw that last uh, time. So yeah. I mean, They're once. All in, that's done. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is not an issue. That's going to wear off with use. That's just surface rust. Oh, yes, yeah. But, uh, so the calipers are all rebuilt. Uh, new um, pads. We've got a couple of suspension components to do. Uh, all the new brake hoses, brake lines, and everything's done. So oh, I can is, see yeah, new new lines, new hoses yeah. all the yeah. way through. Yeah, all the... Um, you can see at the back all the hoses and the main... The main. So we're going we're gonna to lower it down and have a look-see. Purposely kept the old steering coupling. Okay, so that's the old. Okay, yeah, it was shot. Like, I'm really glad that we found it because it's buried somewhere deep inside. But you can see that that's actually what connects your steering to the three-ton vehicle. Uh, okay. And, and that was not an easy thing to spot. You said. Uh, no, it's it's buried deep inside, so we we grab a new one. Yeah. But. It's been updated by by Rolls Royce itself, and a couple tiny changes required. So we need to get longer bolts to make it run properly. Okay. Were they just standard sort of bolts? Nothing too fancy. Uh, no, I don't think so. Once again. Oh, under, I see. There's the uh... under the bonnet. We have two new brake brake pumps. Yeah. One it's up here. One it's buried down there okay. somewhere. We have a new brake. And cylinder, that's uh, a big improvement. Reserve. I'm going to walk over there by Stuart and have a look because when we saw this last, it was, solid rust. It was rust. Like you said, they redid it in matte black. That's fine. I mean, it's meant to be sort of a nickel it's plate, silver, I think. But, but it's, uh, it suits, suits you. It looks way better than black. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, really, at the end of the day, who's going to get fussy about this being black and not it's silver when the rest of this all needs yeah. to be cleaned up anyway? Yeah. Once again, depends on what level of detailing you want to reach with this vehicle. Like, you can end up tearing everything apart and get it to original colors, everything matching, like, for 
jigs we have all the books and we get all the proper information about colors and everything so there is like there is restoration till forever if you bolt want bolt and screw level and there is a restoration to make it run and make it nice vehicle so it depends where you want to stop and mm, well i, I want to make it so i can at least drive it legally on the road first and then i'll deal with yeah you know, then you'll decide painting you some want. of this stuff and cleaning it up under yeah, here yeah i want to recommend the, the biggest problem is that it's opening the can of worms because everything we touch is getting way way deeper than we think Right. It's like every time you touch something one, you get something else and But we're end up. we're closing the gap though. We're getting to the end of it though. I really hope that like during this week we'll be able like the brake system is complete, so we'll be able to check it. Stu has the This is quite pump. fun. The rear brake pump was so corroded that the housing, the reservoir we had to cut off to oh. get it separated from the brake pump itself. Normally there's an O ring, this slides off. No way, that was cut and then had to be chiseled to get it separated from the, the the corrosion. It was just because of the water in the system. Right, and what had happened was this, at some point somebody left a cap off or something oh, it was just and water. water got inside. It's not, completely, inside the it's not completely sealed system. As you can see, there are breather lines because the brake fluid expands and there are breather holes. Yep. So the brake fluid itself is hydrophobic, so it absorbs a lot of a lot of uh, moisture in it. Like usually newer vehicles, they tend to make a brake fluid when it absorbs too much moisture, it gets green. Yeah. So that's the time to replace it, same here. But it's set for a couple thousand years, so <laughs> this dinosaur thousand. became a little bit rusty. We're gonna upgrade from dot two to dot four anyway, which um, means it absorbs less moisture in the system. Okay, so we shouldn't run into that. And yeah, no, no. Higher boiling so. points. So. Well, and it's going to be a functioning vehicle again. No, I'm no. going to be keeping my eye on and and making sure that we're keeping you, up on maintenance. If you run it, if you run it on daily base, you're also not getting too much moisture because it warms up, heats up. It, it's like it works. The biggest enemy of all these vehicles is sitting in the spot because like when you don't run, you die. It's same thing like you sit on the coach every day, so you feel hear ache, hear pain in the back, everything. Yeah, it, um, these cars need to be driven and they need to be uh, run in. So when, when you see a car and you think it's a good deal and it's been sitting for years, sometimes it's not such a good deal because you have to do a lot of work, which is what we're finding out. Yeah. Biggest recommendation like for all the project owners, if you're planning to buy a project, make yourself a very, very high budget and all the money that you'll be able to save will be a bonus. And high yeah. expectations yeah. as well. Well, and I think people don't understand that when you're negotiating on a car. Yeah like this like i i got this car at a, at a what i think was a fair price because it needed all this work but right. by the time i'm done all this i could have just bought one that was already in nice shape that's a possibility yeah um, i don't think you can find a convertible but, that's the problem like yeah there's not a lot of them around the rarity there. of this bird um it's not like the regular sedan you know they're still available but yeah sedans are dime a dozen with this it's that that commands a higher respect. Um, it needed to be saved. Yes, yes, absolutely. Somebody Since had to save it. Some of the cosmetic stuff in here, that can be done later. That's not, that doesn't affect it from driving. They can yeah. always revisit this. this oh, stuff. sure, yeah. Like you can take um, these uh, pots off and get them polished. polished and... You know, this can all be repainted. It, it goes on and on and on, but you've got to we sort haven't, of... We haven't dri dri driven it properly, so like we cannot say what will be the next step like we opened the transmission the transmission was fairly clean inside like not gunned up not giant no giant chunks of metal floating around nothing in there. <laughs> like first of all i don't believe it has big mileage on it so it will be fairly must be fairly fairly good condition once again the biggest enemy of the con transmissions is also a moisture that was fairly clean inside we'll see we'll get the all the answers once we'll drive it we, so, were, we had a bit of a hold up with the alloy adapter for the uh, water pump and fan, but I'm scouring the world. Uh, we managed to find one. It's oh, wonderful. A rare bird, but uh, that's it, in transit as we speak. It's on its way, okay. Yep, no, that's, uh, it's, uh, yep. yeah, you go to all corners of the world and wherever it is, it's, it's available and grab it. So we have to finish up the brakes. Check them, like it's already, the it's brakes, done. Brakes, are, brakes are already on the level of final checking because we have all the pads in, all the lines installed. It took some close to 40 feet of lines 
to be installed. Like at some point, I ran out of swear words, so I need to Google them. <laughs> Uh, Did you switch over to Ukrainian swear words after? I believe I <laughs> learned a lot of new swear words. <laughs> you developed the Rolls Royce Twitch. Oh yeah, I see. <laughs> sort of like your head sort of <laughs> do but this, but uh, the, the brake system needs to be checked. Once the brake system functional on the hoist, we'll take it off the hoist. We'll drive it. We'll see how it stops. If it's functioning properly, the suspension, the brakes. Then we will be able to take it at least to highway speeds to see what's going on with an engine on under the loads when it warms up like the major things for us at first of all the most beneficial thing is to stop it once we are able to stop it then we are able to drive it and see what's yes. going on further because and like make it run here for 10 minutes you can check the engine itself but so this is uh the last step you so it, do you think i'll be able to drive this thing home before we get snow <laughs> uh not in alberta not because enough. you can get the snow tomorrow, you don't know, never, but yeah. he, I, I'm scared to say things like that because so every time we touch something, we, we explore something new. Something else, yeah, okay. And I, I wouldn't like, prepare for a worst case scenario, everything you get before it, it's a bonus because like... Uh, well, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll keep plugging away at it. I mean, you guys have made uh, such a big dent in what it needs that, you know, yeah, we're getting Yeah, it was there. a huge list. There was a really, really huge list. And, like, the shock was a big bump because we started to pull it with the regular tools that we had in the shop. And we ended up stopping the work because we couldn't work without proper Bentley tool. And was waiting for the tool. And then you're waiting for the parts, tool parts, tool parts. And then that steering coupling showed up once again ah, out of nowhere so well you yeah. know i guess we'll just we'll leave it with you guys um once it's out of here i still have to get it into get the bumper repaired and get the top finished it does have a top on it now which it hasn't had in probably you know 15 years uh but that some of the trim work and detail needs to be finished up on it so um well thank you i did the gorgeous job on it like yeah it just all. It just needs a little, some trim and some finishing, but uh, it's stretching out nicely and it's, uh, it's nice that it has a top again. Because I mean, nobody likes to see uh No, we prefer them topless. You prefer, oh, you prefer them topless, okay. <laughs> but maybe you should turn that to de techno dance music back on, we'll have the exactly, topless rolls. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what it is. I hope we'll get further with it as soon as possible and we'll be able to. I can't promise you the first drive on it because I'll have to drive it first. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Second drive, we hope you'll be able to drive it. <laughs> we'll get in there. No, it's looking good. The, the irony is, this is the car I own, and that guy has the car that I want. You know, and it's so funny that uh, you have your sort of, I wouldn't say dream car, but I mean, if people always say, if you had to have another car, what would it be? And there, there it is, there's one right there. But uh, he's in the same boat I'm in. I seem to like cars that end up in the shop for a really long time, you know. You, you like the looks of them, but then they need a lot of work and... This one's been here for like close to two years. Okay, well we're gonna, we're making better progress on this. Rolls, we'll, yeah. we'll be seeing that one up on the road before this long. This one will, like hopefully the, the Rolls will see the road way before the E-Type because... Yeah, well the E-Type was a major job. That's, that's well, engine that's, and... Actually the, with the E-Type it was a little bit more than he was able to bite. Okay, so you're just so, doing it in stages to help the, the exactly, client. We, in the end of the web day, we need to get money for oh yeah for what we work for so of course a tiny bit more than he was able to buy it and then stop here wait for parts get cheaper parts get more pricey parts yeah but yeah you want to see the engine for this one oh sure yeah so the engine had to be rebuilt in this Matching colors and everything. Oh yeah, no, it looks great. Completely rebuilt. It needs to be washed down, but there's the complete, fully rebuilt original engine that came out of the car. Matching Champion numbers. plugs, the whole thing, yeah. Everything that came out of factory and looks like a factory we were trying to get, restore, find, rebuild, repaint, powder coat, whatever you name it, but. Well, I'm sure he'll be happy once he gets it back on the road. But thank you guys for working on my car and getting it back together. We appreciate you to be our customer. Another thing, Alex, Lev, he did find his 10 mil socket in the Lotus. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> but he did find his 10 mil socket. His 10 mil socket was missing. A quarter penny. It's on the ground, which is good. 
hubcaps are back on. Um, so why not walk us through sort of uh, what needs doing on us to get her done and out of the shop? Well, we got the um, uh, we got the uh, all the carbs back together. Okay, carbs. Yeah, we they needed a rebuild. And the trope, we found a lot of missing pieces from the previous person, and okay, all these little odds and sods you. You, you can't get the parts new, so it's a delay right. of trying to find used all the time. On the plus side, we did get seat belts are in. The back seat is now in with seat belts. It is finishing off. It's uh... getting there. I need to get the uh, the wood trim for up here. I took that off to redo. There's you know there's still work for me to do on this vehicle once I get it home. But uh, all I need is to get it back to my house, and I can do the rest. Well, I can't believe that it's finally roadworthy. After nearly two years trying to get this once raccoon eaten Rolls Royce back together, we finally get our just desserts and have a chance to take it for a spin. It's a surreal and phenomenal feeling to finally be behind the wheel of this car. When I first got it, I regretted it. I thought, what have I done? This, this thing is terrible. It's never gonna see the light of day again. Never gonna be back on the road. But I proved myself wrong. I had instant buyer's remorse when it first pulled off that trailer. But now, now I feel like a million bucks. And the best part about it is, there's room enough in the vehicle for all my my whole family, my wife and my kids. It's a five-passenger convertible. There's not a lot of five-passenger convertibles around, so to find one uh, that you like is kind of a nice feature. Overall, the car is really smooth. Um, there's still a few little things, little bugs that we have to work out of it. It's not 100% perfect yet, but it's darn close. But it sure does drive nice. There definitely is something to be said about driving through the country with the top down on a sunny day. It's just stunning. And to think that this car was uh, so far gone that even I, the eternal optimist, didn't think it could happen. And yet here I am driving it behind the wheel, enjoying it in all of its glory. And aside from needing a couple little things like the convertible top boot and uh, adjusting the rear ride height a bit, the car is essentially ready to go. Um, so I think I'm just going to enjoy this day and enjoy this moment and uh, take in all the hard work that's happened. Now the big benefit when I bought this car is that although it was taken apart and although it was eaten by raccoons, the body was really decent. Never a speck of rust on this vehicle. Always been uh, a rust-free car. And um, that's a big deal when you don't have to do a whole lot of body work. We did get some of the little dents taken out. Uh, we got some of the body work done, of course, and it was painted with base clear. And it sure does look good. The lines on this car are particularly nice because it kind of has this little swoop where normally, and this is the same length as the four-door, the doors would have been a little bit shorter on a, on a four-door, right about there. And uh, it wouldn't have had that swoop right there. So what they did at Mulliner 
is they extended the door and they kind of gave that nice little bump, that little swoop right there. Very classy sort of look. Um, you know, I'm just so pleased that it's come together like this. There were a few little hiccups along the way. The previous owners, um, well, the shop they had it at had lost the trim on the side. I found a parts car in California that had that. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we had to source. It was not easy. Even finding, uh, we were missing one of our little side markers. I had to find one on eBay. <laughs> Thankfully, I found one. It was the only one I could find that was that style because a lot of things are very specific to just this year. But it is a very handsome car. It will certainly look uh, very good once I get the top finished up and everything all done. As for the interior, we did go with leather and that's what it should be. And it just smells great. I don't know how else to explain it, but a, an old car like this with fresh leather interior just smells right. You feel like you're in an English den of some kind on wheels. Um, it has the factory AM, F, AM and FM radio. Um, the dashwood is all in and good and you know, it, uh, it looks like a car again, although not 100% perfect, it sure is a heck of a lot better than what it was before. What's kind of unique and special about this car, other than the fact it's a cool old Rolls, is that it's a Molliner Park Ward drop head coupe. So it's not technically a Corniche. When you watch old movies from the 80s and they're in Beverly Hills, a lot of times they're driving around in a Corniche and a Corniche looks a lot like this, but they have a bigger sort of North American style bumper. I say North American style because they had different regulations for impact ratings and they put big giant bumpers on the bottom. This has the European thin chrome bumpers like it was meant to have, and it gives the car a very clean and very authentic look. And if you're a purist into these sort of cars, the earlier models like this, they're the ones you want to find. In terms of restoration costs on this, well, I don't know if I want to go into details on that because frankly, my wife might be watching this, <laughs> but I will say this much. Um, with the price I got the car and for the cost of repairs and the paint and everything, we're still in it for less than what it would cost to buy one of these in this shape right now. Um, and I kind of stretched out my payment plan over a couple of years, so it wasn't one big um, bite to chew on. But would I do it again? Probably not one this big, probably not a, not a Rolls Royce. It's hard enough to work on, uh, you know, even North American cars, let alone working on an old British car like this, uh, like a Rolls Royce. Um, but that said, I'm not over my head on it, and that's really important. The, the other thing is, even if you went out and bought one of these, and it was, you know, at, at its peak price, you don't know what you're getting. It might look really nice, but you don't know if the brakes have been done, if it needs exhaust work, et cetera, et cetera. And I know we've done everything to this. So I feel confident that at the end of the day, I got good value for what I did to it and a good driving car as a result. Well, let's see, it has to pass one more test first. The kid test. So what do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. It's good Abigail, how did your hair do back there? Not great. Yeah, her hair got that windswept look. Well, come on out, guys. Well, I'd say after a lot of effort, this car has been a success. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube series and this adventure. It's been a long struggle, but so worth it and so glad that we can get out with the kids. Melissa had a book club tonight, that's why she's not in the video, but I will take her out in the car with us in the next day or so. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you all soon and bye for now.